billion or a bond of Kenya shillings 10 million. Also charge companies associated with the accused persons. Pre-trial set for 2nd May this year. Number four, bond terms for accused number four, five, six, seven, three and eight are hereby consolidated. The matter shall now be mentioned. It was a Elta Skelter Tuesday for ex both National Museums of Kenya and for other co-accused persons. From the ESCC to the courts here at Milimani, where 10 offenses were placed against them for embezzling public funds. Ruth Wamboy reporting from Milimani Law Courts. The pretrial has been set for the 2nd of May 2024 and our reporter Ruth Mboi will be tracking it all for you. Now, Kenya is committed to enhancing its bilateral ties with South Korea to boost trade and economic opportunities. President William Ruto, while meeting South Korea's special presidential envoy and first vice minister for foreign affairs, Hong Kyung Kim at State House Nairobi, underscored the value Kenya put in partnership with South Korea in the development of technical and vocational education and training, TVET, public health, water and sanitation, and ICT sectors. The president, who will attend the forthcoming Korea-African Summit, committed to escalating Kenyan's collaboration with the Asian nation. The two leaders agreed to align Nairobi and Seoul's positions to promote adherence to international laws to foster global peace and stability. And that story on ties between Kenya and Korea brings us to a fast break here on Prime Edition. Don't go away. We'll be back. But coming up on this live broadcast. Casneb, your gateway to a world of possibilities. Casneb offers world-class qualifications in accounting, fraud investigations, management and governance, credit management, investment and financial analysis, ICT, and quality management. Visit www.casneb.or.ke and enroll today. Casneb. Shaping futures, transforming lives. Mmm, shamba ni bili. Yako ni gani? Kwenye star, five, seven, zero, hash. Every 100 shillings unayotumia kwa lucky game, inakupa one entry point. Ya kuingia kwenye drum ya draw, ambayo inakupa fursa ya kujishibia moja kati ya shamba jizi mbili. Mwisho wa April, naptagaza mshidi wa shamba hili na 1.1 million Kenyan shillings. Na unapata title digi yako safi. Na mwisho wa May, naptagaza mshidi wa shamba hili na 1.1 million Kenyan shillings. Lori za mawe, na mchanga. Plot it iso hizi. Dial star 570 hash. Title did dio hii. Fuka na shake. Welcome to Sensei Institute. Mahali skills zangu ni pesa mkononi. At Sensei College, practical skills is the definition. Accredited by the government and founded on a Christian background, Sensei College offers all-rounded programs that are tailor-made to enhance your skills and give you the future you desire. We offer courses such as interior design, fashion and design, hairdressing and beauty, hospitality courses, trailer driving and defensive driving, building construction technology, CCTV, solar and electrical installation, photography and video production, electronic courses, vehicle electronics and mechanic courses, agricultural mechanics, ICT, and many more. To enroll in any of our campuses in Nairobi and Nakuru, all you need is your national ID card. Mapema do best. Take advantage of our monthly intake. Come to Kusot Na Skills. Sensei College, my skills, my future.
Welcome back. Well, before the break, I was saying coming up, and the video did not play, but of course, I had we we're expecting uh, to see a story on the Juakali artisans saying that the housing contracts are affordable. We will be telling you where and how. And uh, later on in sports, Bernard Okoch is in studio and he'll be talking to us about the Kenya under 20 head coach naming a 28 man Chipu squad. Tell us who is in the team. Now, a story on chaos. Chaos erupted on Tuesday at Moranga County Assembly after two opposing sides of the County Assembly disagreed. According to the angry MCS, two members of the County Assembly allegedly to, are alleged to have colluded with the Assembly clerk Wilson Courier and Speaker Johnson Mokuha to deny the members their allowances. You can see on your screen those images. This comes days after two members Wamboi Mwangi and Simon Wamwea were forcefully ejected from the chambers, forcing them to get a court order to be allowed to access the assembly. Upon their arrival is when the fight ensued, causing that kind of destruction that you're seeing on your screen and non-value. Uh, during that, the MCS hurled chairs, tables at each other. <laughs> are the ones that are going to sit on the county service oh, yes. board. It is our vote. Oh, yes. There is no way the party, the party should protect us because we love the party. Toka diseba mpaka sahi, hakuna mebasi yote yapa amelipua. Arawances na nasarali. Then the, the hotels, tumekua kule, tukieda hizo meetings, hawalipagi yata mikahawa. So that is why we are, we are protesting to fight for our rights. The fate of Charles Gidinji, President William Ruto's nominee for Consul General to the Democratic Republic of Congo in Goma now lies with Parliament after the National Assembly Departmental Committee on Defense, Intelligence and Foreign Relations tabled its report rejecting his nomination. In that report, the committee stated that the nominee demonstrated lack of knowledge on expected duties of a Consular General. Committee Chair Nelson Quiet said that the committee okayed the nomination of other 23 foreign envoy and four consular general nominees. The House is set to debate the committee report for possible adoption. Um, I will have them in cluster. High commissioners, Ms. Catherine Kirumba Karemo, London, United Kingdom. Honorable Josh Mahangi as High Commissioner, Kampala, Uganda. Honorable Lillian Tomitom as High Commissioner, Lusaka, Zambia. Consuls General, Mr. Ezra Chiloba, Los Angeles, USA. Mr. Aden Mohamud Mohammed, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Mr. David Iboko Lokemer, Dubai, UAE. And two that rejects the appointment of Mr. Charles Givinji Keiru as Council General, Goma Democratic Republic of Congo, and three resolves that henceforth Council Generals should undergo vetting after their nomination by appointing authority, and that the appointing authority calls the serving Council General not vetted for the vetting and approval by the National Assembly. Thank you. Now, Information, Communication and Digital Economy Cabinet Secretary Eliud Owalona wants Parliament to co-regulate TikTok instead of banning it. Appearing before the National Assembly Petitions Committee, Owalo said that banning TikTok will deny millions of youth daily earnings and cause a mass exit of private sectors operating within that digital space. A section of members of Parliament, however, are concerned about the government's capacity to regulate the content before it's published on TikTok. Responding to a petition before the National Assembly that proposes a ban on Chinese social media giant TikTok in Kenya, Information, Communication and Digital Economy CS Eliud Owalo implored MPs to allow social media platforms to self-regulate as the government monitors compliance with existing frameworks. The CS argues that a total ban on TikTok will go against the government's ambition to assist Kenyans in accessing digital jobs. 
entities. We, today we have got a lot of private sector entities who are already creating youth for uh, jobs for our youth in the digital in the digital space. So I just wanted us to take that example, our practical working arrangement with members of parliament to create jobs for our youth in the digital space and look at the likely repercussions if we ban the digital platform. MPs raised concerns over the government's capacity to monitor and protect Kenyans from illicit content. Uh, if something is bad, is bad, and we should come out broadly and say this is bad, irrespective of what the, the, the world outside there would think about the Kenyan position. Meanwhile, the National Assembly Trade Committee has given the National Cereals and Produce Board and Kenya Bureau of Standards seven days to appear and respond to queries regarding the distribution of fake fertilizer. The heads of the two state agencies failed to appear before the James Gakuya led committee, citing sick leave. That particular uh, uh, saga or state corporation must be represented in the next meeting. Whether the MDs are within the country or out of the country. And the National Assembly Administration and Security Committee is considering the bribery amendment bill that seeks to commission police uniforms without pockets. You look at Dubai, they don't have traffic officers. Uh, they just have an integrated intelligent traffic system. The bill, sponsored by Bomachoge Borabu MP Obadia Barongo, also seeks to install CCTV cameras to monitor the behavior of traffic police officers. Gisho Kawashira, Prime Edition. Now, President William Ruto says that the country's economy is beginning to show signs of improvement. The president has enumerated the significant signs of growth. Here now are the details. Miezi chache na makaribu mwaka moja iliyopita watu walikuwa na wasiwasi mambo yanaenda namna gani It's the 16th of April 2024 and many continue to be shocked by President Ruto's economic strategy Lakini niliwaambia we must make the right decisions Kenya's economy has witnessed a remarkable turnaround in recent months the president's strategic initiatives have led to significant reductions in the prices of essential commodities, offering much needed relief to consumers across the country. Leo ile bei ya unga ilikuwa 200, saa hii inakaribia 100. Dola ilikuwa imefika 160, saa hii iko hapa 120 something. Na bado Belt tightening measures implemented by the government have resulted in across the board reductions in the prices of essential goods. Mafuta ndio ile ilikuwa pale, mmeona hata leo imeanguka na shilingi 10 just today. Petrol prices have experienced a drastic drop falling from 217 shillings in November 2023 to an astonishingly low 193 shillings in April 2024. Because we are making the right decisions. We are not making popular decisions. And Kenya is going to go forward. Kenya itabadilika tukiona kwa macho yetu. So, mimi na wauliza, fellow leaders in Kenya, we must focus because we have a historic opportunity to change Kenya. Consumers rejoice as sugar prices are slashed in half plummeting from 500 shillings in August 2023 to just 250 shillings in April 2024. Electricity costs see a noticeable decrease, offering financial relief to households. The decisive action taken by President William Ruto's administration is clearly bearing fruit with tangible improvement seen across various sectors of the economy. As the nation continues on this path of economic recovery and prosperity, it is evident that strategic leadership plays a pivotal role in shaping a brighter future for Kenya. Zile inchi ambazo ziko mbele yetu wali tutangulia. Leo wamekomesha umasikini. Leo watu wengi wao wanafanya kazi. Leo they are industrialized. They have made progress. It is because they made the right decisions and leaders led 
from the front. We are delivering the plan. When you star 570 hash, Kuna Ploti, nani up to 1.1 million Kenyan shillings with a genuine title deed. Naina Kungoja, star 570 hash, Kukana Shake. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is Kenya's most trusted news and entertainment brand. Grow your business, acquire more clients, and reach new, diverse audiences by advertising with us. We connect brands to audiences that matter, driving results for brands and enhancing your current marketing strategies. We have packages for all needs, and no product is too small for us. Contact us today and capitalize on our combined power of radio, TV, and digital platforms. KBC Connecting Kenyans. You're saying, Irazabal, who you wouldn't do it. Didn't you see him on stage accusing you? Forget about that love because, because it cannot happen. Because it's not allowed. You and my son cannot be together. I would never have something to do with a woman as sick and as false as you are. We're glad to have you back. My name is Weiru Mujenga. We take a look at the day's business. Now, Juakali artisans have secured a deal for the fabrication and supply of steel doors and windows for construction of affordable housing units at Majimbo area of Embu town. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa says artisans are playing a crucial role in the implementation of the affordable housing project countrywide. The National Housing Corporation and Embu Juakali Business Inclusivity Craft Workers Association have been targeting thousands of skilled youth who are already benefiting from the multi-billion housing project being rolled out in various counties. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa says the move will create more opportunities for the artisans. This program of affordable housing is a lot of people. One, what we are part of nyumba nzuri za kukaa lakini sana sana sikijengwa vijana wetu na wamama wapate ajira these sectors is the juakali sector and agriculture affordable housing is one of the key pillar that enables the juakali sector to absorb millions of kenyans by offering them employment Kashago says the flagship affordable housing project has been designed to benefit millions of jobless skilled youth who have been deprived of work for years, while at the same time challenging them on obtaining certification for their skills. Sasa tumeanza program ya kusema nyinyi muende pale kwa polytechnic, pale kwa ministry ya industry, mufanyiwe mutihani, mawe uweke, 
Currently, over 100,000 affordable housing units are under construction in various parts of the country. Alanoko, Prime Edition. Now, the Institute of Public Finance wants the government to prioritize social spending in this year's budget to cushion the vulnerable in society. The Institute uh, CEO's uh, James Muragori says the proposed budget cuts in key sectors like health, agriculture and education will have an adverse effect on the cost of living and the general economy. The draft 2024-2025 budget is estimated at 4.1 trillion shillings, of which 1.24 trillion shillings is for the consolidated fund services, mostly to be used in servicing debts. However, the Institute of Public Finance warns that extending budget cuts on key sectors to prioritize debt servicing will affect the overall economy and increase the cost of living. The thing that the government is doing is very important, but what is our priority? We must ask what are our priorities. But we know pending bills is important, health services are important, education is important, agriculture is important. Muraguri says the 12 billion shillings reduction in the proposed budget for the crop development subsector is likely to see a reduction in the subsidized fertilizer program beneficiaries. There is, it's very important that we consider uh, fiscal consolidation not in the vulnerable sectors so that we attain economic growth. The Institute of Public Finance is calling for prioritization of settlement of pending bills by government agencies to stimulate economic activity, enable businesses to create more wealth and jobs that will generate additional tax revenue. We have lost contractors in this country. The people have gotten into depression, committed suicide, because some of them borrowed loans from banks. The Institute of Public Finance wants the national government to fully devolve functions worth 272 billion shillings to avoid duplication of roles. It will stop duplication of efforts and we can, try, we can free up some bit of resources at the county level because we can take uh, the delivery of service at the county level is more efficient. We were telling the Auditor General to help us track and advise and, and, and tell us what is the impact to the nation in terms of this, all these individual funds. Benson Droba reporting for Prime Edition. Now, locally trained engineers will be able to practice across the globe by June 2025 when Kenya attains provisional status under the Washington Accord. Engineers Board of Kenya Chief Executive Engineer Margaret Ogai says this will create more employment opportunities for engineers as well as encourage uptake and practice in the field. More than 15,000 graduate engineers are registered at the Engineers Board of Kenya. However, there are about 3,000 professional engineers. This has been attributed to the high cost of specialized training and limited opportunities for those in the engineering field. It is a very rapid partnership between the academia and the industry and us at the center as a regulator to make sure that the programs taught in the universities fit into the industry. Kenya hopes this will be corrected by the coming into force of the Washington Accord, which is a multilateral agreement between bodies responsible for accreditation of engineering qualifications to assist in the mobility of professional engineers globally. So the outcome would be that we'll have engineers who will then be recognized internationally. If you graduate from a Kenyan university today, you can go and get employed in any part of the world. And this will support export of engineering services and skills as we're still looking to bring employment into our country. Speaking during the launch of the fifth edition of the Engineering Partnerships Convention, Rhodes Principal Secretary, Engineer Joseph Mbogwa, urged engineers to incorporate data, climate change trends and emerging technologies when undertaking projects. Sure that uh, we bring down the cost of uh, construction and operations of many of our aspects in this country. And again, once we bring down the cost of, uh, uh, of uh, doing business, then again, this will create space for many more engineers to be engaged. We are excited to share our accomplishments and future plans with you and look forward to gaining valuable insights from your experience and Regina Manyara reporting for Prime Edition.
Now, the Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research Organization Director General Dr. Elliot uh, Kiga says the agency targets to raise 55 billion shillings over the next five years to fund its operations. That includes development of new rice varieties. Here is Frederick Moki with the details. In a bid to harness biotechnology for comprehensive agricultural development and enhance seed production capabilities, the Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research Organization would require 11 billion shillings annually over the next five years to, among others, help accelerate research on sustainable agricultural practices. Dr. Kiregera says the funding will comprise grants from development partners, internally generated revenue, public-private partnerships, and government allocations. Currently, we are operating at about seven, eight billion per year. So we have to work with our partners and also, the, of course, the government, and also from our ANA to, to meet the gap that is there. And within the next three months, they should have aligned all the strategic plan to the better agenda and be practical. I will not allow any more workshops and workshops and conferences which are not adding value. Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research Organization is calling for partners to help develop new rice seed varieties that will help Kenya minimize reliance on imports and commercialize the agricultural sector. We've got a variety of rice that we are looking at commercializing and getting into out there that can be grown in the non-traditional growing areas like in the highlands, which is rain-fed, which does not they need the irrigation like the, the, the moya or those canopy. It in, just needs the normal rains. And this is going to be a game changer. Frederick Moki for Prime Edition. Agencies involved in cargo clearance, clearance rather, should ensure they reduce cases of technical hitches which affect smooth clearance of cargo. Shippers Council of Eastern Africa CEO Agayo Ogambi says slow or disruption of cargo clearance processes is negatively affecting businesses. Kenya's imports reached 35.9 million tons in 2023, up from 33.8 million tons the previous year. However, despite the country's reliance on maritime imports for sustenance, importers continue to grapple with challenges such as delays in customs clearance. Shippers, especially the clearing agents and the cargo owners, to plan appropriately for the clearance of the cargo. Uh, I also want to urge them to embraced the pre-arrival processing that is being rolled out by KRA that entails uh, advanced documentations that save them on time for the clearance procedures. Kenya Maritime Authority believes uh, training industry players to leverage new technologies, documentation and real-time tracking of cargo will facilitate faster and cost-effective trade processes. We are also developing Kenya Maritime Data Bank which is, will be a centralized depository of all data and information relating to the maritime sector, which is key because without data you are not be able to, in terms of making informed decisions. The arrival of the four SGS ship to shore country in Lamo, which was released last week officially. This has taken us almost four years to plan, but now officially they have arrived. So in the next month or two, we'll be able to go for the business. They are urging investors to seize investment opportunities in tourism, logistics and blue economy as more businesses shift towards sea transport. Trevor Nindo for Prime Edition. Well, that marks the end of business news tonight, but you can find more stories on our website at kbc.co.ke. My name is Wari Mujenga. Have a good night. South Africa Cup of Nations.
Sports News is brought to you by Mozart Beat. Thank you so much for joining us on Sports this evening. I'm Bernard Okumu. Let's begin with rugby, where Kenya under-20 head coach Simon Jawichre has named the 28-man Chipu squad to this year's Rugby Africa under-20 Bathes Trophy slated 20th to 28th of April in Harare, Zimbabwe. The Kenyan team will leave the country on Thursday ahead of the commencement of their campaign against Namibia on Saturday. Edmond Omondi will captain the side that has nine returning players from the squad that did the duty at the World Rugby Under-20 Trophy held last year in Nairobi, namely Gaylon Ngasi, Andy Kolomondi, Ido Kuta, Wycliffe Oguta, Nathan Tisindoli, Patrick Wainama, Faran Juma, Michael Wamalwa and James Olela. Many showed interest, many came through, we've had to travel up and down the country and eventually we were able to put together, I think, over the period a group that I can say is ready to represent, ready to put their best foot forward. Also making the cut are Alvin Cavoli from Oilers and Philip Okeo, who have been standout performers in the Kenya Cup for their club sides, Menengai, Oilers and Nakuru. And full skill, skillful of boys here. Yeah. The 20 squad, we are going to represent Kenya. Uh, we assure you that we are going to bring the cup home. This year's tournament features four teams led by host Zimbabwe, last year's runners-up Kenya, Namibia and Tunisia. The, the winner of the under-20 Bates Trophy goes on to, on to the world under-20 trophy. So it is quite uh, a, a big event. There's only one, one qualifier from Africa because the event this year, the, the under-20 trophy this year is being held in Spain. So uh, yeah, it, it is up to us to put our best foot forward. The Kenyan team will leave the country on Thursday ahead of the start of their campaign against Namibia on Saturday before taking on Tunisia on Wednesday next week and completing their campaign with a clash against host and defending champions Zimbabwe on Sunday 28th April. For Prime Edition, I'm Sela Onyango. Thank you so much, Sela, for that report. Moving on, Kenya Ports Authority humbled Zambia's Green Buffaloes Volleyball Club by three straight sets in their third Group D match of the ongoing Africa Men's Volleyball Club Championship in Cairo, Egypt. The Dockers won sets of 25-18, 25-16, and 25-12 to move a step closer to the quarterfinals for the third consecutive year. Now the James on Terry charges led by veteran setter Elijah Bosire, Kenyan international Dennis Omolo, and Libero Sam Juma had earlier defeated the University of Zimbabwe Wolves by three sets at one of 25-13, 25-14 and 25-27 and 25-18 to maintain their perfect start in this year's championship. KPA, Prisons, Kenya and Equity are representing Kenya in the continental assignment. <laughs> And hosts Morocco and Angola advanced to the semi-finals of the ongoing CAF Futsal Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. The Atlas Lions registered a comfortable 13-0 win over Zambia at the Muli Abdela complex while Angola beat Ghana by 11 goals to 3 at the Saleh Ibn Yassin Hall. Tonight at 10 p.m., Libya will face Namibia while Mauritania will play Egypt. The matches will be live on KBC Channel 1 and Y254 TV. Hicham Jugi's ruthless side made their intentions known early when Captain Sofin El Mosra broke the deadlock just two minutes into the one sided march. Fired them in front after three and a half minutes. Supian El Mesra. Idris Rias El Fini doubled the advantage before three more goals in the space of three minutes from Ismail Amazal and Safin Cherry's brace made it 5 0. Another Shirawi goal. An own goal. Idris Feni doubled his tally before the impressive Anas El Aye hit a quick brace to make it 8 nil going into the break. The host returned from the break, more formidable to stamp the authority in the game winning 13 nil. Meanwhile, Angola beat Ghana 11-3 to book a spot in the semi-finals. The Sabo Antelopes of Angola finished second in the Group B with six points, while Ghana without a point to sit at the bottom of the table. Surely an opportunity and what a goal that is by Zambia. 
finally get their name. Atlas of Lions will face the runners up of Group B in the semi finals on Friday, while Angola has a date with the winner of Group B on the same day. It could be 5 1, and it is. And Shirawi. Tonight, Libya will face Namibia, while Mauritania play Egypt. The matches will be live on KBC Channel 1 and Y254. King Orimonki for Prime Edition Sports. Further afield, the second leg of the UEFA Champions League quarterfinals gets underway tonight with Borussia Dortmund looking to make amends after their 2 1 loss to Atletico Madrid, while Barcelona will be aiming to maintain their 3 2 lead when they host PSG. Now, both games will be played at 10 p.m. East African time, with winners on aggregate progressing to the last four. Final spots are up for grabs as Atletico Madrid travel to Dortmund while PSG play Barcelona in Paris. Dortmund have lost three of their last five Champions League meetings with Atletico, including their 2-1 loss in the first leg last week. Rodrigo Del Paul and Samuel Lino were on target at the City of As Metropolitano before Sebastian Haller's 81st-minute strike gave Dortmund some hope of making it into the last four. His efforts were not enough, but they hoped to make amends using tonight's home advantage. Meanwhile, Barcelona looked to reach their 13th semi-final appearance and the first since the 20th, who headed one home late on in the game. Last week's game winner Christian Sien will not feature in tonight's fixture due to an accumulation of yellow cards, but former Barcelona player and team... And with that preview of uh, tonight's uh, Champions League quarterfinal second leg match is how we end tonight's uh, prime edition sports. But remember to catch the ongoing futsal matches live on KBC Channel 1 at 10 p.m. East African time. And some of the matches on uh, Libya will be facing Namibia while Mauritania plays Egypt. And Bernardo Kumu, have a restful night. Sports News was brought to you by Mozart Bait. You can lift the plane. The higher you fly, the higher you win. The sky is the limit. Mozart Bait. Well, many thanks indeed to Bernardo Kochokumu for that sporty update. And of course, earlier on, we had Wairimo. Jenga handling the business segment. I want to thank you all on the day that the Institute of the Certified Secretaries sent an appeal to its partners and Kenyans of Goodwill to support its fundraising campaign to see the completion of a training facility. Of course, we understand that the ICS Chief Executive Officer Jeremiah Karanja saying the Institute is not funded by government and that they intend to raise 170 million shillings before the end of October 2024. On behalf of the team in the back end, the Prime Edition team, including our sign language interpreter, Susan Thuku, there she is, smiling as usual, in the style of a mile per while. My name is Tom Boyer. Good night from Nairobi, Kenya. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. gateway to a world of possibilities. Visit www.casneb.or.ke and enroll today. Casneb, shaping futures, transforming lives. Ili kupata uchungu mtamu kama sikiza tuni yako, bonyeza star 812 star 504 hash Je, wajua kuwa kuna uchungu mtamu? Mm. Bwana mmoja kauna kipepeo kichanga kikijikakamua kutoka nje ya shimo la ukuni. Akakitazama kwa huruma mno, akahisi uchungu kwa niaba yacho. Mwisho, akaamua kukisaidia akakifu. Kupata uchungu mtamu kama skiza tun, bonyeza star 812 star 504 hash star 812 star 504 hash
Watch the Mozart Bet Cup as teams from both the top tier and low tier battle for the ultimate prize of representing the country in Africa's CAF Confederations Cup. Catch all the action live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1, beginning with the round of 16 matches, the quarterfinal, semi final, and the final. Mozart Bet Cup, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is Kenya's most trusted news and entertainment brand. Grow your business, acquire more clients, and reach new, diverse audiences by advertising with us. We connect brands to audiences that matter, driving results for brands and enhancing your current marketing strategies. We have packages for all needs, and no product is too small for us. Contact us today and capitalize on our combined power of radio, TV, and digital platforms. KBC Connecting Kenyans. Victory as for Namibia. Well, they just want something. Their hopes are not completely dashed yet, but it would take something of a footballing miracle to progress. Given the... Teams, Libya, Namibia and Mauritania finish on three points. So of course, that other match between Egypt and Mauritania also taking place at the same time. Teams led by Said Al Haoud from Morocco and his refereeing team as the national anthems get underway. Here, we're known for our sense of service. It's all about finding ways to support you. Day after day, doing everything we can to be useful and providing energy in all its forms. Everywhere, every time, all across the continent. But they certainly will feel that they have more than enough quality. You see in picture there, Ahmed al as well as warning number eight, Mohamed Said. He scored against Mauritania with that stunning volley to uh, make it advantage Libya in that match. Of course, there, the number 10, Ahmed Alayumni, the number 11, Abdullakim Rashid, as well as the substitute goalkeeper for this evening's match, Aliad Alwazi, uh, Ricardo Calabuig, the uh, Spanish coach, has a plethora of uh, experience under his belt. And he has to get the better of uh, this Namibian outfit, captain there by Ken Salote. Goalkeeper Usura Ria in the starting lineup today. A team built on a 2 2 formation. Two defenders and two attackers like to keep things compact, do the Ray 5. Certainly won't want to ship uh, the kind of goals that they did against Egypt. But bearing in mind that at some point in that game, it was a 2-2 scoreline. Rowan Yeager amongst the goals. And a uh, very interesting match it was up until a certain point. But then Egypt definitely showing their quality. Born facer Sianga. One of those expected to come off the bench today. Just on making sure that Ryan Diego has a full contingent there. The Brave Fives coach who started his trade in England. Coaching with the likes of a Millwall FC before coming over to the futsal game. A game which has given him so much and uh, one which he hopes to emulate in terms of his coaching prowess. And now, the refereeing outfit. 
including a timekeeper, Dungdavu Musa, the Nigerian. It's going to have a very important job ahead of the national anthems. Pride there from the Libyan outfit taking on Namibia, the debutantes who will never get tired of singing their national anthem at these competitions. Namibia, land of the brave, and uh, they will have to show real bravery trying to overcome uh, what is a monumental goal deficit at the moment. Minus eight goals, but the brave five counting on uh, those players to get the job done. A real scalp it would be to claim the 2008 champions, and uh, we have the starting lineup there. Ziad Aziz keeps his place from the match against Mauritania, as does Soeb Al Ghul, Suleiman El Dewish, and uh, Mohamed Said. Just the one change from that match, Ali Shoshan coming in, uh, the number nine from Al Shawi. Abdul Hakim Rashid, the uh, 26 year old forward, the number 11. With the name Hakim there, he was uh, one of the few to start against uh, Mauritania who drops down. A very different side that first took out against uh, Egypt in the opening game. Ricardo Calabui ringing the changes after that match. Just a reminder of uh, tonight's match officials, uh, Saeed al a home referee, so there is uh, some representation for Morocco who are one of the outstanding favorites to claim this uh, title. Would make it three in a row for the Moroccans. But the Libyans will certainly be looking to some kind of history to get over the line into those uh, knockout phases. Semi-final place uh, beckoning after this match, and we should know after this final Group B game exactly who can uh, put their names down for those top three spots. The top three, which would see the teams qualify for Uzbekistan later in the year, the World Cup, the cream of the crop. 
And what better way to at least get your teams into gear. And here is the Brave Five lineup. Surya Ria keeping his uh, spot. Nangui Kamotuka also started against both Mauritania and Egypt. And uh, just changes up top. Luis Solunga, this is his uh, first start of the competition. Van Veek is on the bench for today. And uh, looking to the likes of Jaeger and Haikali, two experienced players despite their young age. Haikali obviously much older than uh, his young midfield partner, Rowan Jaeger, but both ballers, FC teammates and uh, hopeful Ryan Jaeger that that will play into his hands. We are about to get it underway in this pristine court here in Rabat. Libya starting early with Mohamed Said into the path of Al Shoshan. And straight away the Libyans have an opportunity to get into a good space. And Namibia just had to be a little bit wary there. An early warning sign, wanting to not concede. And just running into a little bit of traffic. But managing to keep up the ball, Luis Solunga now. And Namibia driving for the first shot in anger from Kensa Lotte, the captain. Plays for quality FC, just lacking the slightest bit of quality in the direction there with that shot, but uh, some good early impetus at least uh, from Namibia. They do have some determination about them, the team in uh, white and blue. They were 4-1 down against Mauritania in the opening match. And managed to claw it all the way back, forcing the North Africans into a bit of a nervy start. But here come Libya, and surely an opportunity, a first goal straight away. It wasn't in doubt, Mohamed Said. On the score sheet once again. They opened up a space in the midfield, just hanging on the edge of the D. And Mohamed Sayed, the 29-year-old, adds to his goal tally for the tournament. And not even three minutes on the clock, the Mediterranean Knights are already ahead in this uh, futsal game. And here they come again, and it really is uh, some astonishing attack. But the Namibians a little bit haphazard. That was a great ball to find the attacker. Now Salote drags it back, plays it to the wing, and it's cut out well by Soya Balgul. Just a reminder there of uh, the point system. As it stands, Egypt currently drawing with Mauritania. But Libya ahead in uh, this uh, match already as uh, Said just uh, fails to keep it under control. Well, the quality of uh, the North Africans just shining through against their southern opponents there. And there it is taken again around the player. He manages to keep control of the ball. Looking for that pass to Al Shoshan. Seems to be just a little bit of tension, but uh, excited tension at that uh, from the Libyan bench. You can see the quality of their players uh, shining through. Well held up here by Al Shoshan again, just as uh, Suleiman Al Dawish was uh, stealing through. The Namibian defense managed to keep it out. Al Dawish with the kick in and uh, looking across field, headed out by Luis Solunga. Sulunga yet to find the score sheet so far for Namibia. It was instrumental in the qualifiers against Tunisia. A 
real shock against uh, the Eagles of Carthage. Now Libya just keeping the ball at the back here. Said, the goal scorer, plays it back to his uh, defensive partner. Al Ghul again. Uh, Said making the run. Finds it back, and uh, they're very good with these intricate passes, are the men in red. Use their goalkeeper to good effect as well, and uh, just parried off the ball a little bit. Good pressure from the Namibians to win a corner. The kick does go the way of uh, the Mediterranean Knights, though, in the end. Forty-four year old uh, Ricardo Calabuig, who uh, had some experience coaching Levante up against uh, Ryan Jago, the UEFA B license holder, and very much an integral part of uh, this Namibian coaching staff. And here they come, the Brave Five. What a goal! Absolute spanking. Nangwe Kamatuka into the top right hand corner he drove forward and as has been the case with namibia throughout this tournament a direct approach proves fruitful what a stunning strike he wasn't closed down quickly enough but even the libyans weren't expecting that kind of quality on the shots okay they come again the brave five they're certainly living up to the occasion just have to be a little bit careful that they don't let their efforts go to waste yeah and they've done extremely well there to keep the ball and uh, keep possession Libya do come back though Elderwish tries to find Said and a real battle in the middle of the park well it was a terrific strike by the 22 year old Kamatsuka plays his futsal in the capital, Vintuk. And that's exactly what they needed. A very unlikely win it was for Namibia. But to get on the score sheet and respond in such a convincing fashion. Well, that's more than Ryan Jago could have uh, wanted from his team. They come again now. First substitutions, Mohamed Zgrig, the Olympic player now, the number four, looking for the ball. And just have to be a little bit wary that they don't lose out here. Grabbing the shirt of Al Shoshan was uh, Kamatuka. Here comes uh, Shoshan again, and uh, it's well cleared by the substitutes league. At 32, he's uh, one of the veterans on this pitch. Original Willem, so it is. And here they come. The Namibian team now led by Luis Solunga. Solunga it is with the strike. Immediately a corner taken by Willemsa. Just looking across field, it is cut out and he has to be wary there. Kamatuka looking a little bit jaded as he, he took that cross field kick. It is a very tiring match. A tiring game in general, hence the substitutes, the rolling subs for this futsal Africa Cup of Nations. Just uh, stolen off and here comes uh, Willemsa trying to hassle off uh, Abdul Hakim Rashid. Rashid, who started against Mauritania, is now on the pitch with Ahmed Alajnaf. Alajnaf plays it across. And it's cut out again by Solunga, having to work back now the attacker. They do like to play, at least in their defensive positions, two or three at the back, Namibia when coming up against a strong attack like Libya's update of uh, that 
points tally now. Egypt ahead in their game. According to the form book, not really a surprise as we see uh, George Hakali coming on for Namibia, the number eight up top. Rowan Jäger it is rather. Uh, tries to turn it to uh, the Libyan attacker and nearly gets through. It really is a battle between these two sides. Ahmed Abdelaziz, one of the defenders now for the Libyan side, picks the ball up, the number two. Looks for options, has to go wide. And uh, back to Hussam al Awefali. Well defended in the end uh, by Rowan Jaeger. One of the youngsters, the 19-year-old midfielder. Now uh, down the line into feet. al -Ajnaf finds the wing and just across. And he was lurking there. Was al Werfali, the Ali Tiad midfielder. <laughs> Namibia keeping alert, and the deflection could have gone anywhere. It does go for a corner. Abdullah Kim Rashid strike with the left foot. The Namibians all tracking back. You can see the zonal marking. Working nearly to good effect there. They have to clear again and uh, Libya play back to the goalkeeper. Abdelaziz finds the Namibian captain, Ken Salote, who tries to go down the line and actually well found for Salunga. Salunga hangs the ball up, goes central and Salote trying to 